When history looks back at the movies of 2023, it is inevitable that the word that will dominate that conversation is of course Barbenheimer, which technically is not a word, it's a portmanteau, but that's besides the point. I'd like to add a word, a real word even, to join the conversation, queer. Because this year was so rich in queer cinema and that gave me a lot of hope, which obviously hope was not easy to come by in 2023. So I would like to celebrate this by doing what we do at the end of the year. We make lists of the 13 best queer films of 2023. Why 13, you ask? Well, 13 is a pretty inherently queer number. Like, is it lucky or is it evil? I ask that question about myself every day. So let's get to it. You can never tell anyone, do you understand? Promise me. Okay. Number 13, Eileen. I don't wanna tell you too much about this film because there's a real sharp turn in it. But what I can safely tell you is that Anne Hathaway and Thomas and Mackenzie are absolutely serving as two women who meet cute at a prison in the 1960s. Basically, if you loved Todd Haynes' as Carol, but wished it was more sinister and unhinged, then this is the film for you. Number 12, The Stroll. The history of New York City's meatpacking district is told by the transgender women of color who lived it in Kristen LaBelle and Zachary Drucker's incredibly illuminating documentary. Before the neighborhood became gentrified by the Samantha Joneses of this world, trans women of color lived, worked, loved, and died on its streets. This is an essential new entry in the burgeoning canon of trans cinema. Number 11, Of An Age. Macedonian Australian filmmaker Goran Stalewski is one of the most exciting new queer voices in world cinema, and his second feature, Of An Age, continues to prove that. Set in the summer of 1999, it follows a 24 hour romance between a closeted teenager and the older brother of his ballroom dance partner. It's a sweet and sexy and deeply romantic ode to what it feels like not just to fall in love for the first time, but to be seen for the first time. Shut up. Number 10, Orlando, My Political Biography. Esteemed queer philosopher Paul B. Preciado made his first film this year with Orlando, My Political Biography. And what a bold and inventive blurring of reality and fiction it was. Inspired by Virginia Woolf's 94-year-old novel, Orlando, Preciado brings together 26 trans and non-binary people aged 8 to 70 to reflect on their identities as they trade places as the title character. The film feels like a manifesto for our times. There's never been a man like me, and I'll always be on top. Number nine, Dicks the Musical. Imagine the parent trap but as a musical with flying vaginas, sewer boys, and Bo and Yang playing God. That is in essence Dicks the Musical, a film unlike anything you'll see this year, or any year really. It delivers us two major queer voices in its stars and writers, Josh Sharp and Aaron Jackson, it is also certainly not for everyone, but for those who have a taste for Dicks, lube up. Oh, God. Number eight, Bottoms. Do you know what comes after Dicks? Bottoms. Sorry. But seriously, these two films were collectively my Barbenheimer, with Bottoms being the Heimer. It was the queer high school comedy I've been waiting for, and it was delivered to us by a great queer Canadian, director Emma Seligman. Absurd, audacious, and wildly unapologetic, this is half of the Dicks Bottoms double feature we never knew we needed. Number seven, Mutt. Okay, so not only is this my favorite debut film from a queer director this year, but Mutt also features my favorite debut performance from a queer actor. Director Vuk Lungolov Klotz and star Leo Meal come together in this film to offer us a really visceral window into a day in the life of a trans man and how it feels for him to move through life in the midst of his transition. Number six, rotting in the sun. So if this list was ranked solely by the amount of on-screen penises or graphic gay sex, there would be no doubt number one would be bestowed upon Sebastian Silva's Rotting in the Sun. But this movie is also so much more than just the sum of all its penises. It's a biting satire of class, queer culture, and filmmaking itself. And it features one of the best comedic performances of the year from social media star Jordan Firstman. Tell Sebastian that I am his worst nightmare and that nobody ghosts Jordan Firstman. Number five, Monster. This intensely compassionate movie, which won the Queer Palm for best LGBTQ film at the 2023 Cannes Film Festival, demands a lot of us. Directed by legendary Japanese filmmaker Hirokazu Korida, it is also best going into it knowing as little as possible. Because watching this film kind of feels like putting together a beautifully intricate queer puzzle, and the emotional payoff when you connect that final piece is astounding. Number four, Anatomy of a Fall. This film made it very clear that the time has come for us to ascend Sandra Hewler to a very special status. Actresses that gay men around the world worship. Like I'm talking Cate Blanchett level, because she is so unbelievably good as a bisexual woman on trial for the death of her husband in this movie. A movie that is just 
so masterful and riveting and intelligent, I still haven't gotten over it. I did not kill him. That's not the point. Number three, passages. I trust few filmmakers to examine our sexual and emotional impulses as much as I do Ira Sachs, who gave us something so special this year with passages. I felt so upended by this film, which follows a filmmaker who leaves his husband for a woman. I was honestly kind of frightened by how much it nails the selfishness I've experienced in myself and others. And at the same time, it was also somehow so hot. Number two, All of Us Strangers. I'm not sure how I even talk about this movie without crumbling into myself. Writer and director Andrew Hay has basically given us the ultimate cinematic expression of gay devastation. It was a long time ago. Yeah, I don't think that matters. And watching Andrew Scott and Paul Mescal on screen just annihilated me. Number one, May, December. So some of you may be asking, why is this movie about a bunch of seemingly stray people the number one queer film of the year? Well, first and foremost, it is a film by Todd Haynes perhaps the greatest queer filmmaker of our time. It also just feels undeniably queer in so many ways, from its general sensibility, to its themes of interchanging identities, to the fact that at one point the camera zooms in on Julianne Moore saying, I don't think we have enough hot dogs. It's also just so intricate and hilarious and a masterwork of tonal manipulation that could have only been pulled off by Haynes and thus only by a queer filmmaker. And there you have it, the 13 best queer films of 2023, Please feel free to disagree with me all you want in the comments. I welcome it, as do I another year of great queer cinema.